Hi, apologies for the occasional lack of uh, original audio on here. I had problems with my microphone. Hi, and welcome to episode two of the £20 workbench. Last time I went through building the main bench itself, and today I'm going to talk about some of the accessories I've built for it and uh, some of the tarting up I've done on it. And next time we'll go through some further accessories, uh, hopefully with advice. Okay, well, here we go. So here are a couple of board jacks that I've made for the bench. I don't have a huge number of holes in them. Uh, instead of that, I've done this um, stop, which is uh, adjust between four different positions. So you can have one inch through to four inch off spacing from the, the drilled holes in the actual jack itself. So that avoids drilling loads of holes in that member. Now the board jacks are really useful when you're working with slightly larger pieces. You can pop them down on there so you can plane at a good height for you at the bench. Now at the moment there's nothing to stop it moving along apart from friction so you could just stick a clamp, G clamp or something uh, to the leg at the end. If you're working on a board that doesn't have parallel edges obviously you can change the height on the board jacks to give yourself a nice horizontal to work with with the plane. just makes life a lot easier. So the next thing is um, a planing stop here which is adjustable. It's got a little wing nut down there. I can raise it, lower it, completely hide it in the bench if I want. So I set it to the height for the wood I'm going to be working on. That just butts up there and we can plane against it. Makes a really good stop. If you're working something on its edge like that, it can be a little bit wobbly. So I've made this little jig that slides onto the stop. Place your work in there. And there's a little wedge that goes in the back. That holds it nice and, nice and tight, it's not going to fall over. Now as for actually tarting the bench up, what I've done so far is I've plugged the holes where the nails were in the pallet. That's worked really well. The disassembly method I use leaves lovely holes, just the right size for, I think it's two plug cutters up from the one I used to get the nails out. So I've got all those holes now plugged. Just looks a little bit nicer. And up on the top of the bench, a uh, couple of spots where I flattened the bench off, I've come close to or actually gone into where the, the holes were, where the balls have been taken off the pallet. And I've just uh, chopped those out and filled them in. And last time you would have seen there was a hole in the top of the bench, which is going to be my tool well. Well at the moment I've got a board in there which is flush with the top of the bench, so it gives me a nice flat surface. And I'll show you more on that a little bit later. The planing stock requires a mortise to be chopped adjacent to the inside of one of the front legs. The left hand one if you're right handed and the right hand leg if you're left handed. Now when you're actually laminating the bench top you could actually leave a gap in the laminations and use that as your mortise. Now I've prepared this uh, stop is simply a piece of the hardwood which is plain to fit the mortise I've chopped and I've sawn a slot in it which will take a fixing underneath the bench. I'm just drilling there for the fixing. I've got a piece of threaded rod, a couple of uh, wing nuts on there which lock together so I can wind it in to require depth. And then you'll see the slot at the bottom of the stop just slides over that very easily and then with a penny washer on there and a wing nut I can lock the planing stop at whatever depth I want. As you can see, I soon made use of the planing stop, planing up material to make the board jacks. That simply slats from the pallet, plane to width, with a curve at the top, which just allows them to be uh, positioned upright once they're sitting on the stretcher, and just beveled round the edges to soften it. Then a space of the same width as a stretcher, and then a hook piece are glued on the back. So it just slots on over the stretcher. Then I mark out for and drill half inch holes every three inches down the board jack. 
the adjustable stops are made from a piece of uh, seven and a half by uh, three and a half inch ply which gets a half inch dowel positioned one inch in from one edge and three inch in from the other. So I'm going to put a slot in for the bench stop to slide into and then I'll cut a wedge at this end and what I'll do is I'll leave a blank end about the same size as the bench stop cut a wedge out of oh, probably about 15 degrees something like that I'll maintain the wedge as one, one piece and we'll be able to use that actually as the wedge for the stop so let's cut that out a nice snug fit on the stop wedge got a thin piece of material put that in the bird's mouth push the wedge in locks it nice and upright and we can plane that easily by pure good fortune one of the pieces of ply that I salvaged was just the right width to fit in the cut out of the bench so I could measure that up and cut it off for the base of the tool well to aid its removal I bored a one inch hole towards each end thin hardwood supports were prepared on the edge of a wider board and ripped off and these were then glued and screwed in place quite pleased with the tool well you may better see extra rail in here that's because the tool well can be lifted out and the base of it can be lifted out and we can put it on those top bearers and then we've got a nice flat work surface on the bench if we want to we can completely remove it that will allow us to clamp either side of the well which can be really quite useful I wanted to fill all the holes that were left over from the pallet disassembly so as you can see I used a plug cutter to cut quite a lot from the salvaged Moranti these were then glued, sawn and paired flush where three of the holes had appeared whilst I was flattening the top I just chopped them out to depth uh, cut off a piece of hardwood to fit glued that in and when it was dry flushed it off with a plane so far that brings the overall spend to £6.51 pence. there will be more accessories next time and hopefully I'll have finished cutting these threads and will have made a vice for the bench so watch out for that Plans are becoming available on my website. They can be downloaded for free, but I am suggesting a $1 donation to those of you who can afford it. Don't forget to watch out for part three of this $20 workbench. Cheerio.